Another Big Ten upset that we have was Minnesota beating number 11 USC 24 to 17 in this game for our fifth top 11 team that went down uh, on Saturday. Let's go over the highest grade players starting off with the Golden Gophers. Aiden Gooseby at a 80 grade in this one. Coy Parrish at a 79.4. Quinn Carroll 79.1. Darius Taylor at a 77. Justin Wally at a 77.5. Things would be switched a little bit. Max Broseman at a 69.8. And then finally, the USC side of it. Uh, you got Woody Marks with a 79.4 grade. Kobe Pepe at a 74.5, Jonah Monheim at a 72, Nate Clifton at 70.9, Kamari Ramsey 69.5, and Miller Moss at a 55.5 in this one. Dawn, for you, what was the stat to tell the story in this surprising Big Ten game? USC lately has turnover issues, and they had three turnovers in this game, and they have eight in their last three games, their third straight game with multiple turnovers. And in close games like this against, against uh, Michigan, this game, they fell behind early against Wisconsin because they were turning the ball over. Uh, this is a problem. Look, if they're if they're going to win more games and they're going to get back into Big Ten contention here after after losing two of their last three, they got to stop turning the ball over. Even Miller Moss, as good as he's been, as good as he's been in crunch time, last three games, three big time throws and six turnover worthy plays. Uh, th- this is this is a problem and. I think it's something they don't have a ton of room for error on offense. The receivers, you're going to get into it, aren't playing as well as they should. The run game is solid. Look, last year we could blame USC's defense for everything. I don't think we can do that this year. They've been good enough to win just pretty much every ball game they've been in, right? And I know I know they struggled on the ground against Michigan, and part of that, again, was the game being so tight and falling behind and turning the ball over. You think about what's really outside of the Mullings run What's the defining play of the Michigan game? The Will Johnson pick six, right? Wisconsin falling behind early. This game, uh, interceptions, I, I mean, they the ball, they won't win a ton more games with this type of ball security. You, you can't have eight turnovers in three conference games. They either clean up the ball security, and look, again, Moss is throwing into a lot of tight windows. Uh, this is a receiving core, I think, that's kind of disappointing us a little bit. But uh, look, in, in, in big moments, you can't turn the ball over. And in close games, turnovers make the difference. They lost the turnover battle again in this game, just like they did in the Michigan game. So um, that's that's really where I'm at. Look, you can't beat yourself. And teams that turn the ball over lose games, and that's where that's where USC's at right now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, USC in this game for me, the set the story. 59.8 receiving grade. It's the lowest for the Trojans all season. This is only two games last year where they had a receiving grade below a 60. Uh, USC's top receiver in this game had 39 receiving yards. And, and really the issue, Dawn, they don't have a true number one right now. They have a lot of nice complementary pieces, but that's weird because we thought Zachariah Branch and or Deuce Robinson, uh, you know, former five-star recruits, both true sophomores now, we thought they would be breaking out this year, honestly, with Miller Moss. Branch, 0.63 yards per route run in this game. He is on pace for 545 receiving yards this entire season right now. USC's leading receiver has 234 yards. So their other loss this year was to Michigan. The biggest issue with that loss was the pass protection was terrible. This game, the biggest issue was the receivers did nothing for Miller Moss in this one. I mean, it's just they're both their losses now. You've got different issues offensively outside of Miller Moss and it's just not good enough right now. The, the receiving core is not good enough. The offensive line is not protecting Miller Moss enough either. Uh, I, I don't think it's a Miller Moss problem. And yes, he didn't grade out well in this game at all, but I, I just think right now Miller Moss is, is kind of being left out to dry by the supporting cast for him right now. I haven't been really inspired by the USC play calling either from Lincoln Riley this year either, which is weird to say for a Lincoln Riley offense. I just the, the receiving grade was was the culprit today. The pass blocking was the culprit in the Michigan game. Uh, USC's got some issues offensively outside of Miller Moss right now. Uh, absolutely, it's it's just not firing on all cylinders the way that we're used to seeing from a Lincoln Riley offense. And and I know they don't. Maybe maybe Miller Moss isn't a Caleb Williams or or a, a Spencer Rattler or a, or a Kyler Murray, whatever else you know Lincoln Riley's had in the past. But uh, they should be better than this, and they need to execute better than this right now in offense if they're going to get through. A, what is I mean. Look, you got Penn State next week. Oh, look, yeah. yeah, you got Penn State next week, and th- th- look, there's a ton of there's a lot of better defenses in the Big Ten than there were in the Pac-12 last year. Yeah. That's for sure. The windows the windows are not as open, and, and things are not as easy as they were last year for and in the past for USC's um, offense. So they they need to come out and execute better for sure. Yeah. 
Definitely. So, Don, what was the most impressive part of this Minnesota offset for you? Let's uh, let's go to Minnesota secondary. Let's go to the cornerback spot with their number one corner, Justin Wally. Okay, yep. nine targets, four catches, forty yards. But look, let's let's get the uh, let's let's get the caveats out here. Three of those four catches we charted were, were screens, and all forty of those yards allowed were after the catch. Five forced incompletions. I mean, that, that's an 83.8 coverage grade. You want a, a defining symbol of Minnesota locking down those receivers. Like you just mentioned, Justin Wally is it at cornerback. Minnesota's secondary as a unit was spectacular in this game. It's a very good defense, especially on the back end that doesn't give up a lot of big plays. And Justin Wally was just terrific last night. He was. And his teammate on the other side of the ball, Darius Taylor, he is the entire offense for, for Minnesota this year. 25 carries for 144 yards. Also led Minnesota with 55 receiving yards on five catches in this game. He had nine broken tackles on his 25 runs for a 36% rate, 116 yards after contact. So only, what, 28 yards uh, were before contact for him, so he did a lot after contact. He is Minnesota's offense right now, like I said. He he accounted for 55% of their team's yards in this game. He is a really, really good running back, and it seems like we have a boatload of great running backs in college football that a lot of them can go under the radar, and Darius Taylor is one of those guys that goes under the radar, but he has been spectacular last year for for Minnesota. I believe he's a true freshman last year. This year, he's even better as a sophomore, it seems like, and he was the entire offense for Minnesota in this one. Yeah, when he's healthy, he's terrific. Uh, You could could just see it. Any time that he's on the field at their offense, really moves better he's the engine of it for sure yeah it's like mo ibrahim a couple years ago yeah he was like the engine of that same offense. same thing <laughs> yeah. same exact thing just big physical runners up there at minnesota <laughs>